So then, a big part of any programming language is this idea of conditional statements. And by that I mean check a certain condition. If that condition passes or if it's true, then do one thing. If it doesn't pass, then maybe do another instead. A good example of this would be if a user is logged in. We might want to check that at some point. If they're logged in and that test passes, we do something. If they're not logged in, we do something else. Okay, That could be if they're logged in, we show them one navigation. If they're not logged in, we show them a different navigation. So these kind of things are conditional statements. Another example might be that we have a lot of products and we want to cycle through them. And for each product, we want to check the price of that product. If it's below a certain price, we want to output it to the screen. If it's above a certain price, we don't want to output it to a certain screen. These are all kind of conditional statements. They're like forks in the code where the code could go one way or the other. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. And we're going to use some of the stuff we learned from the last lesson about Booleans and comparisons to do this. Because at the end of the day, we're going to make comparisons or we're going to make certain conditions and they have to be evaluated. So then, the first thing I'd like to do is create just a simple variable. And I'll call this price. And I'm going to set that equal to an integer 20. Now then, I want to do a quick check on this price variable. I want to check if it's below a certain amount. So I could say if, and then in brackets, price is less than 30, then what we're going to do is do something. We're going to fire some code, right? So this is an if statement. It's a conditional statement. We use the if keyword. Then we have some kind of condition we want to evaluate right here. We're saying is the price less than 30? If this condition is true right here, then what's going to happen is this block of code inside here is going to execute. All right. So we could say echo and then we'll say the condition is met. OK. So then if I save this now and go over to the browser and refresh, we can see the condition is met. OK, then. So what if we want to do something else if that condition is not met? For example, if we change this to 10 and we run this, then we see that is not output to the browser. What if we want to do something else if that's not the case? Well, we can add on an else clause. So we can say if this condition is true, if this evaluates to true, then we're going to echo this to the browser. If it doesn't, then we'll run the else clause. So inside this, we'll say echo and then condition not met. OK, so save that. This time, if we refresh, we can see the condition is not met. So that works. That's simple enough, right? We're just checking a simple condition right here and we're firing either this block of code or this block of code dependent on the result of this, if it's true or false. So then we can also add in additional clauses, additional statements that we can evaluate if you like. So the way we do this is by saying else if and then another set of parentheses, another code block like so. So what we're going to do here is check this first of all. If this condition is true, then we'll just echo this and we won't carry on with the rest. If this condition is false, we'll move on to the else if and we'll check this condition right here. So now I'll say if price is less than 20 and then we'll echo something in here if this is the case. So we'll say else if condition met just so we know. And then if this is true, this will fire this block of code. If it's not true, it moves on to the next one, the else condition, the catch all, if you like, and that will fire instead. OK, so we do these in order. This, then this, then finally this, if none of these are true. So this isn't true and this isn't true. So again, this should fire because price is 20. It's not less than 20, it's 20. So let's save this and preview this in a browser. And we can see condition is not met. Awesome. OK, then. So if we change this to 30 right here, then we should get this firing because the price is less than 30. So save this and refresh. And we can see now the else if condition is met. Cool. So it might seem pointless, this, because we're writing this out and we know the price and we know that it's less than 30 and we know that it's more than 10. So why bother doing all of this? And the reason is we might not always know the value of something when we're checking this. We might get it from a database, a list of products, 
and in those list of products we could have different prices and we want to go through those and only output them if they're under or over a certain price so we might not know their price okay so that's why we do this kind of thing so then that's basically if statements now what I've done is saved some of this code from a previous tutorial and this is just a product variable equal to an array of arrays it's a multi-dimensional array and the arrays inside these are all associative arrays and in each array we have a name key and we have a price key so a product name and a product price so what I'd like to do now is use first of all a for each loop to cycle through each one of these we've already covered those loops and then inside the loop for each iteration round for each product what we're going to do is a quick check if the product price is maybe less than something or over something then we're going to output it okay so then let's go down here and do this for each loop first of all we'll say for each and then in brackets products as product okay so I'm using the singular version of the products array and I'm calling each item a product each time around then in here for each one we want to do a little if check so then I'm gonna say if the product that we're currently cycling over and we want the price property from that product and we're gonna check if that is less than 15 and if it's less than 15 then what we're gonna do is output the product name we're gonna echo it so let me just scoot this in now I'm gonna say echo the product itself and we want the price okay and we'll also concatenate a BR tag so that each time around we go on to a new line okay then so if we save that and preview it let's uh, refresh over here we see 10 5 and 2 oops we want the name not the price the name of each product so we get the green shell the gold coin and the banana skin so these are the products where the price is less than 15 because for each product we're checking this and if it's true if the price is less than 15 then we're outputting the name otherwise we're not outputting the name right so it would be this one the green shell it would be this one the gold coin and this the banana skin that is what we saw in the browser awesome okay then now we can check if we want multiple conditions inside if statements so we could say okay well we want the price to be less than 15 but we also want the price to be greater than 2 right this isn't greater than 2 so we don't want to output this now the way we check for multiple conditions is by either nesting our if statements so we could do another if statement in here to check if the product price is also over 2 but that's a bit of a waste of time instead we use a special double and operator and that means we want to check another condition as well and that condition is going to be that the product price is over 2 okay so now we're saying okay we'll only execute this code if the product price is less than 15 and the product price is greater than 2 so now we shouldn't see this one the banana skin so let's save it and preview it and we can see the banana skin has vanished cool okay then so let me just copy this and then I'm going to comment it out because underneath I'm going to do a different example so this time I'm still going to check two things the first thing I want to check is if the price is over 20 now the second thing I want to check is if the price is less than oops less than 10 now obviously something can't be over 20 and less than 10 that's just impossible so I'm gonna change this into an all and that is a double pipe now the pipe symbol can be found on most keyboards left of your space I have to press shift and that key twice and this means or it's a logical or so now we're checking these two conditions and only one of them has to be true so we're saying if the price is over 20 or if the price is less than 10 then we can output the product name does that make sense so if it's less if it's greater than 20 it's going to be this that's the only one greater than 20 and less than 10 is this and this so we should see these three products gold coin lightning bolt and banana skin output to the browser so let's save that and view this and voila we get those cool right okay then so that's how we use if statements to check certain conditions if they're true we execute code if they're not true we can execute something else maybe with an else if or an else statement okay so that's that now 
what about outputting if statements inside the template itself? Because sometimes we want to output different content if something's true and different content if something's false. Well, let's do a little example here. What I'm going to do, first of all, is a div tag. And inside this div, I'll do a UL. Now, I'm going to do a for each loop here to cycle through the product. So I'm going to do my PHP tags and then say for each. And inside, I'm going to say products as product and then open up my loop now remember we need a separate php tag down here to close the loop later on because in between we're going to output some html template code okay so when we're inside this loop i'm going to do an if check now now i'm going to do php to open up my tags again and by the way i could have just left this off and started the if statement but i like to do each line of php code in html templates as its own PHP tag. To me, it just looks cleaner and I know where everything is. So I'm going to say if, then inside the product, and it's going to be the price that we're looking for. If that price of the product is greater than 15, then what we're going to do is output the price. So again, open your curly braces and then we'll close them down below over here. So PHP tags and close them there. So this is where we can output the LI tag now. So we're cycling through all the products if the price is greater than 15, we're going to output an li tag for that product. So we'll say PHP inside here to echo the product. And we want the name this time. OK. All right, then. So let us now save this, cross our fingers and hope it works. Refresh. And now we can see we get the shiny star and the lightning bolt. And that is anything with a price over 15 over here. So we can see this one which is the lightning bolt and the shiny star, which is 20. Sweet. So there we go, my friends. That is how we can use if statements to check things and even output different content in the DOM if a certain check passes.